before the Israeli invasion of Lebanon in 1982, which killed maybe 20,000 people, destroyed much of uh, southern Lebanon and Beirut. Uh, incidentally, all of this is always with the backing of the United States in Gaza and in the, the invasion of Lebanon. Uh, the U.S. provides the arms. The U.S. vetoed Security Council resolutions to try to call for a ceasefire. It's just steady, constant support for atrocities and violence. Now, there's a pretext for the 1982 invasion, too. And you can read it in everything, anything you read. You see the same thing. Uh, uh, New York Times, uh, the government, uh, it's universal. Uh, Israel invaded uh, because they had to protect themselves from uh, attacks from, by the PLO, the Palestinian uh, Liberation Organization, from Lebanon, which was making life impossible for people in the Galilee. Well, you know, here's a, an even more dramatic case than this one of how repeated lying can turn truth into its opposite. Fact of the matter that time, and there's no dispute about it, in the historical record at least, is that there was a, actually a US sponsored ceasefire in the summer of 1981, and the Palestinians kept to it rigorously. Nothing. Israel was, on the other hand, was constantly bombing, uh, severely killing a lot of people plainly trying to elicit some kind of a Palestinian response, which could be used as the pretext for the planned invasion. Well, they couldn't get a pretext, so they finally just invaded with a pretext so ludicrous that you could hardly keep from collapsing in ridicule. Uh, but they bought, but this, and it was not concealed in Israel, not just by Haaretz, but you know the government conceded it. Said, yeah, this is a war for the West Bank. We have to stop the Palestinian offers of negotiations and diplomacy, which are embarrassing. Uh, we don't want diplomacy. We don't want negotiations. We've got to get them to stop. So we'll drive them out of Lebanon. And we'll call the operation Peace for Galilee, which is what it was called. And we'll count on the American uh, intellectual community, uh, media, and so on to reverse the story, which is pretty much what happened. Uh, in fact, when it was occasionally, when Israeli bombings were occasionally reported, it was extremely revealing. So there was one bombing, major bombing, I think around April or so, uh, where they killed a couple of dozen people. And the Washington Post actually reported it for once and said something like, uh, uh, this is not a time for sermons to Israel. It's a time for uh, compassion for Israel's anguish. You know, when they killed a couple more dozen Palestinians uh, with no pretext. Well, yeah, that's, uh, you can go on with this over and over. It's not just the media, it's the intellectual community, it's uh, the government and so on. Since the creation of the State of Israel 60 years ago, presenting the Palestinian narrative, history and rights have been met with highly organized protests. These are orchestrated campaigns that aim to hide the truth and stifle the debate on Palestine-Israel and the issue of justice. The campaigns work to crush the voices of those who disagree with the dominant narrative and to have journals and newspapers avoid the subject of Palestine-Israel and speaking the truth in order to avoid the barrage of hate mail and threats. Such campaigns have even threatened the viability of journals in some instances. One such case is the case of the magazine World Medicine. In 1981, this journal published a piece describing the massacre of Palestinians in 1948 in Dar Yassin by the Irgun and Stern Gang Jewish groups. And under the command of Menachem Begin, who was Prime Minister of Israel in 1981. At the time of publishing the article, Begin denied that it had occurred. But the massacre and other atrocities committed against Palestinians then were later confirmed by the new Israeli historians as military archives were opened and historians could seek the truth. A vicious letter campaign followed the publication of the Dariusine article leading to the resignation of Michael O'Donnell, the editor, and the closure of the magazine. This and other incidents remain imprinted in the consciousness of journal and media editors, so much so that they would rather avoid such harassment than speak, than speak the truth to power. One of the questions that occurs to me is, what is it 
that maintains that mentality in which power has to be used excessively as opposed to with reserve in the way that your president seems to be thinking of using it. And one of the things that keeps that mentality alive, I think, is a, a thought system or a pattern of ideas which uh, sustains it. Uh, and it's a, it, it, it's a kind of cartoon of reality in which Palestinians are portrayed as terrorists, as backward. Uh, was it Henry Selman said that what, what's the value of a democracy that treats its neighbors like dogs? Um, there's a patronizing and there's a diminishing language and imagery used to describe Palestinians, which makes it all the easier to treat them as inhuman and not deserving of respect.